For thousands of years, the Dalles has been a crossroads, as well as a destination. After being introduced to the Americas, domestic horses became the preferred means of transportation for both work and pleasure. People rode horses and used them for farming, carriage, and transportation into the 1940s, even after the arrival of the automobile at the beginning of the 20th century. Well, the market in the early saddle-making days was for the man who actually had a horse and needed to get around on his horse. The harness was mainly for the work harness in the fields, the eastern Washington wheat fields that uh, needed work harness to pull their uh, harvesting machinery and tilling their soil. We're working on a, um, a weighed saddle and it's a ranch saddle for a uh, custom saddle for a lady. My tree maker uses cottonwood and covers them with rawhide and then they're, they're spar varnished to waterproof it. When everyone was still riding horses, there were all different kinds of horses they were riding and you might saddle up your old plow horse and ride to town. Okay, this saddle's going to be seven in the seven-eighths position. How we determine position is the center of the horn is full, and then this is the other line that we go by. If we went halfway between here, they would call that a center fire saddle, which means that the rigging is exactly between this point of the horn and this point of the cannel. A lot of the older saddles, the 1800s, there were a lot of center fire saddles and 5'8 saddles. And they didn't need a back cinch because that saddle, that cinch is back far enough that this is, it's not going to ever lift up when it's on the horse. The barrel of the horse wasn't as big then. And so that, and the backs weren't, they were more hollowed in the back. So when that saddle sat down and you cinched it up on the horse, it wouldn't move forward. Maybe a hundred years ago, 75 years ago, a cowboy needed a saddle. They would ride what they could afford. Saddles were essential to riding a horse. How and why one rode a horse or used a draft animal determined the style of tack required. Although available locally, custom saddles and tack were often too expensive for the typical rancher or merchant. There were so many different makers at the time that made these factory saddles and you could look through the catalog and add the options that you wanted and they and those saddles were made and then shipped to you. Cargo moved in and out of Portland all the time and through a catalog one could order saddles, bridles and harness gear from companies like Sears, Montgomery Wards and the George Lawrence Company of Portland, Oregon. Yeah, my great-grandfather George Lawrence came from Ireland with five of his six children and he came by boat uh, he arrived in Portland and according to all the glorious accounts went to work the same day or the next day for the uh, Sherlock and Company and he had been a uh, managed a department store in Dublin for a while and so he knew how to run a business Sam Sherlock's skill was in making the saddles so they made a good combination, but uh, when Sam died, uh, all the pieces were in place, the workmen were there, and my great-grandfather George knew how to run a business. They had salesmen uh, that traveled to Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, some of Northern California, and eventually even in Alaska. And in the early records, they dealt with places like Fort the Dalles, at one point, it was the largest uh, business of its kind on the West Coast. And we're looking here at my great-grandfather, George. I think he's about 90 years old here. In 1893, he bought the business from the widow of Sam Sherlock with the interest of his three adult sons, George, and William 
and John. And in 1903, he built a quarter block building on the southeast corner of Southwest First and Oak Streets. And that whole building was built for the warehousing of the raw materials and for the production of the saddles and harness, retail space or display space on the first floor as well as shipping area. Now on the second floor they had storage and more display space. On the third floor they had the saddle making. And the saddle making included bridles as well as saddles, of course. And on the fourth floor they had the uh, harness making. And I, mean, I think the peak of the company may have been in the 1920s. And at that point, they were making a full line of saddles and harness, as well as the automotive business and the shoe repair supply business. After World War I, they combined all the manufacturing of the leather goods onto the top, the fourth floor. And it remained there until the building was sold finally in 1985. My family uh, all worked in the business. George Lawrence's three sons were placed by two of their sons. And the two surviving sons, William and George, my, great, my grandfather and my great uncle, took over management. And after that, my father's first cousin, George's son, George A., they called him, and my father, another William, they took over management. As the car came into prominence uh, and started to dominate the transportation industry and the tractor came into the field, the company had to change. And as the saddle business declined, they found a niche in the what they call leather shooting accessories. So our production in the factory had started making holsters and cartridge belts and related items for the sportsmen. At that point, my cousin, my second cousin, uh, and I were the only ones remaining in the business. My cousin ran the business. Uh, he was the president. Eventually, they were making almost entirely uh, leather shooting accessories, holsters, cartridge belts, rifle scabbards, knife scabbards, rifle slings, and continued that until the business uh, was sold in 1985. Uh, this horse here, most saddles set him pretty good. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, important to keeping a horse working and, and doing things is having a saddle that sits a horse right. Having the right saddle is, is, is important to the craft. While harness and tack were important to the success of the George Lawrence Company, the story of the West can't be told without understanding the connection between cowboys and their saddles. People would often be on horseback for 12 hours or more in a day, so a good, comfortable saddle was essential. I think the, that the Lawrence Company made a pretty standard, what they call a stock saddle, a Western saddle. And then they tried to do what they could to make theirs different from anybody else's. In those days, maybe every buckaroo wanted something a little different on his saddle. The base of a saddle is made with a, what they call a saddle tree. And that tree, uh, in the past, traditionally, is made out of wood. And it's made by a specialist, a saddle tree maker. The company would order them from a tree maker. And then it was covered with rawhide. And rawhide is just cowhide that's, that's absolutely raw, and you have to soak it. And then it's workable, and when, you, when it dries, it's as it's hard as a rock. This saddle is the Little Wonder tree. And the Little Wonder probably refers to the shape of the forks of the saddle, the pommel. 
It's a, it has a swell fork and it's shaped a little bit curved this direction. It's got a low, they called it a Mexican horn, but it is an iron horn and it's tipped a little bit forward. The saddle has a flat plate rigging, single rigged, and border stamping everywhere, all around the whole saddle. There are a lot of different styles of western saddles and trees. The wades always have a wood post horn and a slick fork. Other forks are big swell forks or anywhere in between. This is about nine inches from one side to the other. So they'll typically be wider here than a lot of saddles and thinner in the gullet. And the reason that ranch cowboys nowadays are liking the wade saddle so much, if you're doing a lot of ranch roping, when you take your turns on the horn with your rope, the, the rope gets as close to the horse as possible and keeps leverage on the horse's side. In my shop, saddles come in all the time for repair work and I've repaired saddles as old as probably the 1890s and some that are still in good working condition. We know this is a George Lawrence saddle because we found where they put the maker stamp on the saddle and saddle makers put them in all different places. Uh, this this saddle they put on the back of the cantle. It's kind of hard to see because of the Cheyenne roll, but we'll show it to you. It's right under there. It says the George Lawrence Company, Portland, Oregon, USA. Take me over those hills to my 